Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. As always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita, as you know, is a psychosexual therapist, and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. But we also are very fortunate today to have with us Pallavi Banwal. Pallavi is also a sex educator with a qualification from the um, United States. But in, um, in our session today, she's coming on as a fantasy specialist. So we're very excited. And uh, Pallavi, welcome. Thank you, Seema. It's great to be on your platform. Very really honored to be on this show. Thank you for being over here. Uh, Anrita and I have often discussed this idea of fantasy. And we have uh, we get a lot of questions about it. People who write in about what fantasies they have. Then people talk about the guilt that they feel. Then some people talk about how they would like to fantasize, but they can't. And some people actually don't know anything about it. Right, Anvita? We have people who would like to have a better sex life, but can't well, understand that it's all to, down to fantasy. Yeah, and I would love to hear Pallavi's perspective because I think what happens is that fantasies are, you know, like we've said, fantasies could be jumping off a plane and having sex while you're doing it. But there is a discomfort with people allowing themselves to go there you know they still want to stay in the moral compass of what the bedroom might look like whereas the fantasies can be anything uh, but I do think they get scared and the morality kicks in about oh that's not nice how can I have sex in the public how can I think I must be a bad person that I'm imagining having sex in public so I think that is really hard for people to overcome when they think about fantasies. So Pallavi, tell us, why do you think um, fantasy is really important? I mean, you have done a lot of work, you run workshops on it. Why do you feel it's so important? Yeah, uh, so, you know, uh, we often uh, equate love with that initial phase of passionate love. Like whenever they think of love, people feel that there should be something which is called butterflies in the stomach. And then two years or three years down the line, because that is the time uh, when it starts fading and you move into this, uh, you know, uh, companionate love. And then they start missing that old eroticism. Like, where is the spark? Why don't I feel turned on? You know, when I'm with this partner day in and day out, especially like since we are here, we also have to understand the broader context of a pandemic. Like, you know, people were like couples were forced to stay in. They did not have those uh, way outs and that has also created a lot of uh, impasse in the uh, erotic dynamic between the couple so they because most of the people uh, they have always kind of bounded themselves from these you know as Anvita was saying that moral restrictions like we judge ourselves so the self the you know there is no other judgment it's the judgment I inflict on myself uh, and this is this has gone so high the control has gone so high that even before thinking about something, I feel like, should I think or not? Like something there is in the brain and I fear even thinking. So, and why we need, uh, why we are talking about fantasies is again to answer the first, you know, the question is where the spark has gone. I think it's a great way to kind of uh, re reactivate or bring the eros, which is the passion. Like they're looking for the passion and passion is linked to novelty. Passion has a straight uh, linkage to no novelty and the familiarity brings down the passion. So fantasies are a great way to bring novelty uh, inside you because as much of our sexuality is driven from ourself. Uh, I love this quote. I don't, I'm not remembering the person, but he said that love is a decision rather than something I feel. And I, I feel this is so empowering and why we're not talking more of that, that love is a decision which means that I need to be as much sexually awakened inside myself rather than just kind of putting it all on the other person that you fail to, you know, arouse me. So fantasies are a great way to go inside my internal world and see the limitless possibilities. So, right. Um, we've often said that, you know, we, we people would love to be thinking that they have great sex. I mean, people like to have good sex. If they're in a relationship, that's something that they would like to feel that they have. But most people don't. And 
I think one of the big ingredients is definitely fantasy. Uh, I was just going to say that I think I love this idea of fantasy being the novelty. And so in some ways, it is the new flavor, right? Like, you know, it's it's the thing saying every day you're having dal chawal, dal chawal, dal chawal. And then one day you say, okay, let me imagine this dal chawal feels like whatever. And there's nothing wrong with dal chawal. Nobody's saying that that familiarity is bad. But the excitement that comes with putting in a new flavor, you know, a new tarka in some ways is the fantasy. So I think that's, uh, so I like that. I love that idea of the fantasy being a novelty um, into the mix. And I think I really like this idea that it's a decision that you have to make um, because that's something that we always say that you have to decide in your own head that you're going to feel the pleasure. So speaking from the point of view that it's a decision that we're going to make, for a lot of people, it's still a very scary idea. Tell us how, if you were not familiar with this, how would you begin to fantasize? Okay. Um, so first of all, uh, we have, uh, you know, when we think of fantasy, we kind of inadvertently relate it to sexual fantasy. I mean, there are no platonic fantasies or there are no, you know, uh, day-to-day fantasies. I mean, it is always about something forbidden or mysterious or something like the Red Room where I need to go and I need to just make sure that no one is watching me. What I say, and I'm going to quote uh, Dr. Esther Perel, and she has said this, that uh, every person has the capacity to fantasize, which is which is great to know that like some people say, oh, we have never fantasized. So we have always fantasized. We are uh, consuming a lot of media. You know, we are consuming a lot of porn, uh, visual erotica. We have had uh, sexual experiences. So there is a lot of fodder inside. I think fantasy is more about turning into what is already existing in you and start with a blank slate. I mean, we get into those sexual scripts, you know, that is the major block of shoulds. Like this is how it should be. Uh, The man is supposed to be like this. The woman is supposed to be like this. The sex is supposed to be like this. Like the classic, you know, porn case of kissing, uh, you know, squeezing the breast and maybe intercourse like this, this, this. It's very linear. I think fantasy is all over. And uh, first of all, you also need to see uh, your state at that time. You cannot be fantasizing when you are rushing for a deadline. or You need to cook a meal or your child is hankering after you. You need to give yourself space, time and relaxation when your body is relaxed. Because stress is a libido killer. So uh, the ideal time could be after a shower, during having a bath, or uh, before you're hitting the bed, like, you know, you're in a rested state or you are in a vacation. So you make sure your body is relaxed. Make sure you have that kind of a mental privacy, you know, to uh, think about fantasies. Then uh, uh, I would say, maybe pick something, uh, which is something from the past that has worked for you, uh, which could be a great sexual experience that you have had. Uh, Think about uh, what kind of setting it was, how you were touched, uh, what we were feeling that time, uh, what was the time in the moment, and take that as a cue. Maybe it could be uh, some kind of a you know uh, a, a moment where you felt very youthful. So take the themes, bring out the themes from your past sexual experiences. We often st- get stuck in the details. Either we kind of uh, romanticize the past and we say, okay, this person, this person, but there is certain theme emerging from that sexual experience. So you can bring those themes that what was uh, something that was like a turn on. Thirdly, you can uh, always be on the look for sexual turn on. Like uh, to say, you know, I was like before the session, I was working on my laptop and there was this person who was just kind of walking by and kind of just gave me a look and I was like, okay, he's looking at me. And I think that whole, you know, vibe was something which I felt was like a fantasy or maybe uh, you are at the airport and you are just maybe having something by yourself and you see a nice hunk, like, you know, a guy who's just sipping a coffee and you just look at them. Okay, does that kind of attract you? People get scared because they think attraction means that, you know, they are actually cheating or betraying. Don't go into the logistics. It is just imagination. I, I, what I really want to just hone into what Pallavi was saying is that 
pick up on themes that have been excited like imagine the sensation and it could be themes that you have maybe during a movie you've suddenly felt a flutter a scene that has or you've looked at you know you've imagined yourself in a certain place or a certain time could be the airport the thing release that boundaries and i think what is really important to just tie up with what uh, pallavi was saying is don't get you know fixated on how can i have sex on the airport like you know people will be watching something will happen just let go of those things it's in your mind it's an imagination um it is it is a tool it is a source that brings up the arousal and excitement so it's not something that you practically you don't need to go and see if practically i can actually do this or execute it some day maybe but for now for the starters it is just something that you're imagining that leads to arousal um so really it's open it's you know you can think of any and everything uh and you can have sex any and anywhere and we constantly talk about this novelty factor don't we that you know people are looking for something new um that the chemistry has died out etc so find that find what excites you you never have to actually do it but find what excites you because that is really the final frontier everything is possible and i just want to come in i know pallavi said the word youth and i had a reaction to it sex is boundless what she i think as if she can explain herself but i think what she was trying to say is as a you know when there was passion and there was a lot of passion you can have passion at 70 so it's not it's about what was that moment that felt full of passion um so i'm just throwing it out there it it actually i guess for me that was about uh, like you know that first moment when you're in college or in school and you have that yeah, first crush yeah. and that that feeling of like that ridiculously excited feeling that you exactly. get and as you get as i've gotten older you still fantasize you still fall in love you still feel passionate but you don't have that 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 ridiculous feeling somehow Seema you've not had multiple relationships. Like... relationships that's the thing okay, if you sorry. find a new boyfriend <laughs> 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 okay let me just i'm just about to go and tell rahul that i need to go and um, find another partner just to feel that <laughs> excitement again <laughs> okay sorry pallavi to come back to your idea as you can see you know fantasy is very exciting for all of us and we we really believe in it anvita and i are true believers in the power and the benefits yeah. of fantasy we think it's the best thing anybody can do for themselves let's see if we can actually help people create a, a fantasy script so do you have some suggestions do you have some starting points for the fantasy script yes uh, pleasure is very subjective you know it's it's uh, be, it depends on how we interpret it so i i'm going to give you a cue to all the readers and viewers and um you can take it from here wherever you want to go if you feel like okay you're going there you can erase it come back so you can always erase it and come back so this is very uh, uh, it's a very flexible script imagine yourself that uh, you are in a shiny red car okay it's it's a beautiful car and it is parked on a secluded lane which is overlooking the ocean and there is someone in the car with you what are you going to do with that someone Oh. Anvita, are you going first? Oh, am I have am I have to build on it? I'm going to the rocks. I'm getting out of the car. I'm going under the sky, under the stars and I'm going to the rocks finding a flat. Um so I love the stars and the sky and the outside. So um so we were said that in... it's night time. So we oh, made I it night. Oh, I didn't I that's my I made it night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And it fine. could okay, be the so sand or the water coming in as well. Oh, I'm going wild with this fantasy. So that's why I'm going. <laughs> this is what <laughs> been one of my big fantasies always. Um on the on the beach, secluded beach, not necessarily night time, but yeah, we could go with night time. Uh, so I'm sorry Pallavi but the red car got left behind, okay? uh because i think this also anvita mm-hmm. uh, pallavi this is an old age thing because when i was younger i think when we were all in collins and the only place you had was your boyfriend's car today uh i my back hurts i need more space so okay so <laughs> <laughs> sorry i don't give thought i was like 
कैसे होगा गाड़ी में लाइक हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू हैपन मोर स्पेस लाइक या सो वी वी मूव्ड आउट वी वेंट टू द लॉजिस्टिक्स व्हिच वी वर नॉट सपोज्ड टू गो टू वी वेंट एनीवे वी वेंट टू द लॉजिस्टिक्स व्हिच वी वर नॉट मेंट टू गो टू सो आई होप फॉर एवरीबॉडी लिसनिंग दैट दिस इज अ रियली गुड एग्जांपल फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी आर गोइंग इनटू लॉजिस्टिक्स बट योर बॉडी इज विद यू 24/7 सो आई गेस वी थिंक अबाउट इट but i'll tell you another logistic that always stops this fantasy i have this huge fantasy about it and i always think how much pain is the sand and the rocks on the beach going to cause me <laughs> and i'm lying down over there so that is another logistic that so okay i'm going to make a conscious decision i'm going to fantasize on this next time and i'm not going to think about the 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 fact that the sand and the the grit can be painful Okay, move on to the next fantasy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and you know, uh, the good thing with the fantasy is the mental arousal leads to the physical response. Like you already started feeling in your body uh, that arousal. I think that's uh, also people should notice that it it just it's a full body experience. You know, fantasy is not just there in your mind. Your body just starts. It's a system. So. Uh, i i would say some people actually have heard some people can fantasize themselves to the extent of orgasm oh yeah of course, definitely of i always fantasize myself to the extent of orgasm i think that's the natural conclusion to all fantasies but um i was just saying that you know automatically when you start fantasizing it starts to put a smile on your face it, yeah it, absolutely there's just that it lights you up from the inside and very few things in life light you up from the inside so Yeah. This is a this is a happy pill. Hmm. And I and what I also wanted to add was that in some ways just to you know release the pressure of what a fantasy has to be. Um I feel Seema and I went to something very cliche. When I think about the beach, the water and all it's such a cliche fantasy, right? But that's okay it doesn't need to be this oh I'm going to make the best fantasy ever. You know it is it is so personal to you and everybody sometimes actually manages one fantasy that they know will always work so they'll try different things but everybody has that you know one pet fantasy which could be so passe and you would think is that really a fantasy like that but it works if it works for you it's your fantasy so don't worry about like how amazing it is how logistics work how it did it it's your relationship with the fantasy um and what it does to you like pallavi was saying emotionally physically mentally um so just go for it do you have another script for us pallavi yes yes and this is completely opposite because the first one i understand you know it's something we have always imagined beaches and cars red cars and romance So this is something which is very uh, different from the first kind of fantasy uh, so this fantasy is uh, with a mission it has a mission uh, you are uh, the chief uh, investigator of you know your government uh, fbi i mean whatever they they call it see <laughs> okay let's call it uh, fbi so uh, you are the chief investigator and you are entrusted with a very important mission that you need to go out uh, to the neighboring country you need to seduce the leader of the foreign country and get that confidential file so how are you going to seduce that leader so this is interesting and just I, I, i'm just going to put it across to the viewers because i'm sure they'll have a reaction i think i had a reaction of me seducing someone was problematic for me for me it is a problematic relationship and i suddenly was like ooh that that is interesting i didn't but and i didn't know this about myself i've just figured it out yeah. as pallavi was speaking about it um and uh, yeah i think that's just you know not something that excites me in some ways or something or i didn't know or or i'm just uncomfortable with it and i need to get over it like it could be either one but i just figured it out right now um that so maybe for the exploration sake though i'm going to go with it i'm going to go and maybe it's something that i need to overcome so if i had to seduce someone i would be in a sari uh with Black a sexy sari. blouse um for sure and then that would be my seduction attire for sure but it's like pallavi said you know it's not a personal fan. it's like a, you've been entrusted with a mission anvita 
your country's security is at stake. I get it. I'm working on it. Uh, and for <laughs> me, and but the point is, if I have to seduce someone, I don't think it's my body that I seduce with. I think I yes. uh, seduce with flirtation. Yes. So I, Lovely. for me, that's the thing. It's not my body. It's my flirtation, and it's my mind, and it's the conversation. Um, so I feel like that's where I would go. So clothes are important, but I think they've been irrelevant to me always. So they're not my tools of seduction. Uh, and so I think that's what's going to be different for different people. Like I can imagine the seduction, but the seduction is flirting. It's the conversation. It's the attraction. It's it's getting the person attracted to me. But for me, what's sexy about me is my mind. It's not my body. Everybody has their own ways to um, engage sexually. For me, it's the mind. We spoke about, we did that video, mm. right? Uh, about the intellectual. For somebody else, it might be the body. And I don't think that there is judgment on either. Or for somebody else, it might be emotional. Um, so what I'm just saying is that for me, if I had to make this successful, and this was my fantasy, it would be maybe something sexy that I wear. But I think my scenes in the head would be the smiles, the flirting, the conversation, the, you know, like what's happening, interacting, and then how it leads to maybe sex later with the thing. But that's where my fantasy would go to. So hopefully everybody listening in can actually build on this one. Again, we're going into the logistics. I'm sorry, Pallavi, it's a, it's a natural instinct. We overthink. Um, so for everybody listening in, maybe that's one of the lessons you should take away is Stop, don't do what we are doing. Go straight into the fantasy. Just imagine, let your imagination run riot. Okay, I think one more. So, uh, to whoever, so we are saying, okay, uh, imagine that you are a newly crowned king or queen, okay, and of your state. And uh, there are people, lords and ladies, uh, from whom you have to choose a a mate and there is a row of like potential lovers and you need to take one you need to pick one and then you need to lead them to the royal chamber okay so if you find the person and you take them to the royal chamber what would be your first command hmm. Yeah, see, power doesn't work with me. But anyway, my first <laughs> fantasy was my first fantasy was it would be a woman. I would choose a woman in my fantasy, uh, not a man. So that was my, you know. So once again, um, and and I would identify as an ally and a heterosexual. Uh, but I think I would fantasize being with a woman, like and having my co-queen or whatever to be a woman and that would, would be my fantasy um, so in my fantasy I would take a woman with me okay interesting so we are being very brave and actually saying our fantasies out loud you don't have to do that you can keep it totally to yourself but as you can see in your fantasy in your imagination anything is possible yes. and there is no judgment because you're the only person who can judge you so go for it this is just your tool to pleasure nobody's asking you to step outside of your life that you've created this is just your internal tool of pleasure so uh, is there some kind of erotic fiction that you could recommend i mean like is there something that people can go to to start developing this idea in their heads yeah totally uh... So, you know, I would say uh, Khajuraho is a great place to begin with if you are in India. Uh, I remember this quote of uh, Osho, he said that, you know, if you are uh, addicted by sex, you need to go and meditate in Khajuraho to overcome those uh, compulsive sexual tendencies. And I was very uh, kind of fascinated by this. So I went there, I started observing the, you know, the sculptures and the mudras, like how they're holding each other, the sensuality, um, the pause. I mean, it felt like that moment was freezed in time, you know, and it's been there. And uh, to also because a lot, because we get so intimidated by the whole culture, that the culture is the gatekeeper of sexuality. I think that's the great way to break that mind block because, you know, it's right there in the heritage. Okay, It's right there in India. Uh, these uh, 
these uh, you know sculptures these murtis erotic sculptures uh, they are a part of our own heritage the second is i would say uh, pick up uh, some great fiction around uh, i think uh, Uh, I just loved Seema. I'm sorry. I'm. This is not a paid promotion, guys. I I just loved her book, The Art of Seduction. There is a book. Uh, uh, it has a foreword by Grish Karnad. So the book book name is Drama Queen. Uh, it's an excellent book on courtesans. Where uh, because I feel if we are starting out, if we are taking baby steps toward fantasies, I would not like to intimidate you with something uh, which is very sexually explicit. I would like to go subtle. and uh, be comfortable in that zone that okay there are people who i relate to so i think the drama queen is uh, one of the books uh, the, the art of seduction is the book uh, khajuraho is a great place to visit when i was pregnant um, anvita um, palavi when i was pregnant with my third child um, i was given by so you know how your hormones go up so you need something and a bunch of friends had got me some female centric erotic um, fiction to read and you know just to sort of get that get past that urge uh, because i was going through a little bit of difficult time so couldn't actually do anything physically at that point so i think that there is a lot of um, erotic fiction out there but i have to say that out of the ones that they got me some of them like you just said uh, i think that they actually bothered me a couple of them was a, were very much about domination so there's this prince who has these women who he brings in from his, for his harem and yeah by the end of it it would make me feel a little bit queasy i would reread them because those were the only books i had at that point and i needed that little fix but yeah that that bit did nothing for me so yeah maybe i think it's a good idea to look for something that suits you anvita sorry i interrupted you you were going to say no something. no i was exactly going to make the same point that you did but that if your taste become different and you want to read erotica there is a lot of um written erotica there that can be you know more sexually honed in and um, and there and like seema just mentioned that they they can be problematic because initially erotica was written for men by men kind of deal uh, but now there is a lot of like ethic uh, ethical um, erotica which is meant for women written by women which is not 50 shades of gray that is not like part of that genre but if that suits you please go read 50 shades of gray but i'm just saying that there is erotica there uh, which would come under the ethical porn uh, umbrella and we actually advise uh, reading the erotic fiction as opposed to watching pornography we prefer that because we feel that uh, we're talking about fantasy we're talking about imagination it's a it's a wonderful it's a slower build up so it gives you longer term pleasure but i also think you can replace yourself if you're reading something you know you could be the character you could imagine the room you could you, the room setting could be you versus if you're watching something visually then they've already given you the room the characters the people the thing like everything so i totally agree with you seema the fact about reading and actually fantasizing um really brings in your flavor and what you want so uh palavi can we actually address one question a lot of people fantasize a lot of people would like to they kind of you know dip their toe into it gone a little bit further and then the guilt that comes with it because they feel that they shouldn't have one person actually said to me at the end of a talk that i'd done and uh, i and i'd said to them that look you know don't step out of a relationship every relationship loses its novelty factor and that's when fantasizing comes in and he was like i think it's really really wrong to be with your partner but be fantasizing about somebody else i think it's ethically wrong what do you have to say about that so yeah uh, i mean this is a very uh, hotly con- contested uh, controversy the ethics of fantasizing as you said that a lot of people even the ones who are fantasizing feel that they are betraying and they come to me like you know some kind of seeking validation that am i doing wrong or not uh, i would say uh, it's it can go either way you know depending on the situation and your relationship if you are fantasizing in order to endure sex with your partner you probably shouldn't be having sex with them in the first place 
okay but if you are fantasizing to simply amp up your arousal but you are still very much into the sex you are having with the person i don't see much harm because of this what i uh, follow is a guideline uh, that is your mental imagery improving the sex or it is distracting you from something unpleasant you would, you would rather not face i think that's the that's the key to fantasizing that are you trying fantasizing to heighten the sensation or to numb your reality that's a really good point actually it's a very good point to make yeah. are you fantasizing to heighten your sensations or to numb your reality mm-hmm. i mean in my book i think frankly if that's what you need to do you can't escape your reality then that's also okay but that's a really really good point actually anvita yeah i love the quote you know heightened as in and i think that becomes because it's so in some ways numbing your reality is escapism that's what palavi is talking about that you're escaping um the present in some ways and that's why you have to fantasize about somebody else um and that is very different from you know just working on your passion and arousal and getting excited in some ways and and i also want to add to it that you know what pallavi is talking about the ethics and the morality so there is something about the other and who is in your fantasy but i think there's also people start judging themselves for what they are doing in their fantasy and i think both um you know um uh, are problematic like so who you're with you know pallavi answered and i wonder if palavi also wants to speak to what you're doing in your fantasy and that can be sometimes concerning for people as well you know for example anal sex like people will suddenly say oh like you know that's such a bad thing to do you know i can't and i'm i'm keeping it really simple because i think anal sex is quite common but you know there could be so many other fantasies that people could have problems with yeah i i we recently also received a few emails from people who are indulging in their fantasies but are then being attacked by either so much guilt or for or whatever reason it's actually ending up in a worse sexual ex- experience than they first started with because somewhere that fantasy has gone wrong and i think it's worth exploring in your head um why that's stopping you I for some reason I think we judge ourselves most harshly this is the one time I keep saying to people you don't have to say it out loud it's inside your head keep it there use it as a tool for helping it's like you're breathing you know you're using that as a tool for keeping yourself alive in the same way let that fantasy inside you be a tool for keeping yourself well uh, sexually healthy i think that we should come to that point where mm-hmm. we don't judge ourselves for our for our own private fantasies but we do i i don't know if there's um, one piece of advice that either of you can give the audiences towards saying this is the way forward without feeling guilty so so fantasies uh, and freedom they go hand in hand because in my real life i'm so much constrained by the social limits like you know like right, right now i'm sitting in this conference room and i'm here but right there in my imagination in that kind of script i was actually in my leather boots and leather pants and ready to kind of seduce the person i think it's a great way to uh, come out of those social constraints and experience something different it's like a, a wilderness you know fantasy is like a wilderness and we we don't get to experience that in the real life because of the social norms and because which is again we are in a civilized society but i think it it's definitely you need to go out there and experience that wilderness that uncurtailed freedom i think that's what i would say nice i like that that's your saying, your path to freedom yeah i was going to say something similar so i will share a story as the advice so my first day of my psychosexual course uh one of the exercise they ask you to do is to do a uh, sexual mapping and you have to talk about your own sexuality and one of the questions is write down your fantasies write down your three fantasies um so i wrote them and in my head i was like just please don't ask me to discuss them like i hope they don't ask me to talk to other people about my fantasies because i was so like oh, how can i share my fantasies 
to then to now me speaking on a podcast about my fantasy <laughs> that's whatever um, and then you know lo and behold that's what we did we did small groups and we had to share our fantasies and i was just like shit i can't believe and i was embarrassed to death trying to share my fantasy um and then one of the students shared her fantasy and for me it was just like oh my god i can't believe that's her fantasy like it was too much for me but the fact that she could own it and share it was so liberating for me and mine seemed like so like every day in comparison to hers um and and they really shared very edgy fantasies which would really you know you would question they could cause controversies and they could cause um uh, you know co- uh, basically moral moral arguments around and everything uh, but they really owned it and it was their fantasy and as pallavi said that's what increased their sensation and arousal um and it wasn't about is it right or wrong it was about what excites them and what they want in it and for me it was similar to what thing it was liberating to see that if somebody can own that why can't i own my own and why can't i push myself in some ways and and like today i pushed myself to something that felt yes. uncomfortable to me so yeah so i think that's what it is keep it's okay to push ourselves a little bit um to just nudge ourselves a little bit further it's in our head and it's a fantasy it's not in reality well done and with that to begin with i pat <laughs> on the back my darling Uh, but, um no it's it is something that we all have to get past we've all had to walk that path yeah. of getting past um, our our own personal obstacles i think that there is always this thing about um there's a lot of stories from our mythology from our cultural background where they say that um, oh so and so you know she was so pure and she could she was so pure that she could carry water in an unbaked ghada in an unbaked pot and then one day she merely looks at someone on the side of the river and she thinks oh he's very good looking and just thinking that uh, she loses her purity and the the pot breaks and she can no, she no longer has that power so this idea has been fed to us that the um, even thinking about something is bad that the mind is a very powerful yeah. thing that if you think about it you want to then put it into action but like basically women for the longest time have even been we've been told that um sexual pleasure is forbidden to you even inside the mind so we do have a lot of taboos a lot of obstacles to break through to get to the next point so we all totally understand that fantasizing is not an easy thing to do and some of our fantasies are so kinky and it's not just in india um it was uh, jung's book wasn't it the red book that was forbidden which talks about all the um, aberrations and fantasies in the brain and for a long time that was forbidden in the west yeah. so we have a lot of obstacles to cross just to encounter and meet our own fantasies but we encourage you to do that we we know that it's not a comfortable thing to do but um, as we said there are benefits and happiness at the end of it and it's just inside your own head so stick to it So I I have some really interesting notes that I've actually made from what Pallavi said and I really would like to repeat them because I want everybody to take this away. Um one is that this is about mental privacy. It is about your privacy. You do it in the privacy of your mind. You don't have to share it with anybody so don't feel guilty about it but also the fact that you create mental privacy as um Pallavi said so don't kind of do this in the midst of trying to do something else if you've ever tried it you'll know it doesn't work if you ever think oh my yeah. god okay i have like one minute let me squeeze one out you you can't it 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 has a take up so give yourself the mental privacy to have a fantasy even if you allocate yourself 10 minutes enjoy it don't do it in a rush um it's about choice so it's about anything that you can think about it's your choice it doesn't have to be anybody else's fantasy you don't have to take lessons in this it's totally yours nobody else and let no one ever tell you that you have to fantasize along with somebody else's ideas it's all yours um 
as Palvi said, it brings novelty to your relationship. So you want to understand how to stay in a monogamous relationship where you feel that the passion has died out, the chemistry has gone. Fantasy is your go-to tool. Use that. It's all about using your imagination. Let your imagination go absolutely wild because um, this is where we say, and we weren't able to do this, but don't go into the logistics. Don't start saying, ah, but my back won't be able to handle this. Don't go into logistics. Very important. Try and stay away from that. One of the arguments for fantasizing is this is your sense of freedom. In a society, in a world where we're very constrained, and we live within all these barriers, this is where you are totally free. You are the king of your kingdom. You are the queen of your kingdom. And you can have another queen, just like Anrita. Uh, Anrita's fantasy, that is. Um, and finally, that consider whether, and we don't, we're not saying that you have to stop fantasizing, but consider whether you're using your fantasy to heighten your sensations or to numb your reality, which is something that I really like the idea of. I really like that quote. Um, thank you for that, Pallavi. That will stay with me for always. I, I, it's a lot uh, to take away, but that pretty much sums up what I, I really think that if there's nothing else you take away from this, and of course the scripts that Pallavi gave, but please do take these points away. I but, agree. I, I think it's, it's a lot of food for thought and there was a lot of, you know, breaking down and everything. So I think people will take some time digesting this video and looking at different aspects of fantasy. One final word from you, Pallavi, before I wrap up. Um, I would say unleash your imagination. Uh, don't go by the shirts. Uh, rather, uh, keep it open, keep it undefined. Sounds like a very good piece of advice. So if, you, if you've enjoyed the video, do please comment, like, subscribe. I am on info.seema.anand at gmail.com. Uh, send in your questions if you need to get in touch with me. Anvita is on. Anvita.madanbehel at gmail.com for any consultation. And Pallavi is on. Coach Pallavi Bandwal on Instagram. Brilliant. So, and all this will, of course, be in the, um, in the description. So you don't have to worry if you didn't actually get that. And uh, in the meantime, stay well, stay healthy, stay safe, and fantasize and enjoy yourself. Take care. And, we'll see you soon. And I was oh, going to say, and I was just going to say, maybe even build a fantasy with your partner like that. I was just thinking we could have built a fantasy between the three of us, and that would have gone beyond our imagination, you know. And that, like um, Pallavi was saying, unleash your imagination. So fantasize with your partners or with others to unleash that imagination. Great. So you have a slightly wider slate now. It could either be inside mm -hmm. your head or with somebody else. So um, yes, take care and we will see you here next week.